the state of stocks and why some say this correction is not over. New Edge is Cameron Dawson among those making that case. She's here now at Post 9. It's good to see you again. See you. Uh, we should also note, as we're at the lows of the day, the Dow has breached its 50-day moving average. So we've had some technical aspects to this as well. Why do you argue today that this has more to go? Well, the confluence of evidence would support that there is more to go because of seasonality for the first point, meaning that we're in a bad seasonal stretch. September's the worst month. We also know that momentum has turned decisively negative in the near term on a tactical basis. And then breadth, meaning the number of names that are trading above their 50-day moving average, it's not washed out yet. So there's still likely some churn and digestion to go. We've crossed under the 50-day. There's still likely support at that August 2022 high around 4325 and then we'll see how we deal with that support level. What do you what do you make of this uh, alleged change in mentality from what was a decidedly buy the dip market to what has now become maybe a sell the rip market? I think the first thing to acknowledge is that it is very tactical. So as a strategic long-term investor, this shouldn't really change from what your plan is. But I think we can put it in the context of the 50-day. Prior to this sell-off, we were trading above the 50-day. Every time we traded down April and May, we bounced right off of it. Today is different. We're now we're likely going to be in a period of a little bit lower highs, lower lows, and you see people sell into strength. You want to comment on the idea that, you know, until Apple, biggest stock in the market, uh, which is down 11 percent this month. It's the worst mega cap this month and the 10 year yield, which continues to creep higher until those two things stabilize. We're going to be having similar conversations. Yeah, I think that is hypercritical. And if you look at Apple alone today, that broke below its 100 day moving average, which means it puts its 200 days in sight for the next level of support. And Apple being such a behemoth and such an important part of market psyche, it's hard to imagine this market pressing much higher without the contribution of Apple and the other tech names, which have been trading weak as well. Yeah, Joe Terranova of Virtus is with us as well, a CNBC contributor. Of course, um, you want to give us your sort of read on on what's happening here as we've come on the air. We've breached the 50 day, as we said, on on the Dow. Uh, and we're a little, you know, even more unsettled. Mega caps and technology were the leadership. It was the very first time that we've had leadership in the market since the onset of the pandemic. We welcomed it. You can't lose leadership and expect the market to fight up against what is obviously a historically Weak seasonal period. Yeah, September and it's October. The month, it's historically the month of bad. October. Uh, Cameron mentioned Apple breaking down below the 100 day moving average. It's just not Apple. You also have Microsoft and Tesla. So, you know, if, if my math is accurate here, that's probably 15 or 16 percent of the overall S&P 500. Well, Apple alone is like seven. Right. And, and so Microsoft somewhere six and a half and Tesla's right below two percent. So you know, you're talking about close to 16 percent of the S&P trading below its 100 day moving average. We're in that seasonally weak period. And I think the question becomes this. If you were a 2022 bear, you believe this is the beginning of a deeper decline back towards the October lows. Well, because most if of the 2022 are, bears have been 2023 bears. OK, because they they missed it. They weren't positioned correctly to take advantage of the big run in mega caps that we had, which have saved the market. Correct. And if you're a 2023 bull, which I am, you believe that ultimately at some point, not now, not now at all, some point as we move to the back half of September into October, there's a tremendous buying opportunity. If you go back, Scott, over the last 33 years, there's been 10 instances in which the S&P 500 in the first half of the year rose by 10 percent or more. In each one of those 10 instances, the second half of the year was positive. If, in fact, that is going to be the setup as we move into the fourth quarter, you're going to have one heck of a chase for performance because all those 22 bears, they have to come around at some so point. So you're, you know, you're part strategist, you're part historian, you're part technician, right? You view the market through so many different prisms. What about the one that Joe puts forth? Well, I think to put another point to Joe's is that this correction as of right now is not about growth fears. And that's very different from 2022. 2022, we saw EPS revisions go down 10 percent. We saw the weak recession or the, the weak GDP quarters that we had. So people had a kick up in recession fears. You don't have growth fears when Atlanta Fed GDP now is at 5.8 percent. Right. This is about yields and this is about valuations, which is why the highest valuation parts of the market 
market are underperforming. Because I'm so glad you went there because of the idea that the whole reason we got here in the first place was multiple expansion from the very names in which you're referencing that have pulled back over the month of August. Exactly. And if you look at for the S&P 500, the entirety of the move this year has been multiple expansion, anticipating a better earnings environment. The thing that has been the most surprising is that despite the fact that we've had a recession call or no recession, no landing, a boom, a banking crisis, earnings estimates for the entire year have been static. They haven't moved. And so all the volatility is driven by valuation and multiple, which makes it susceptible to moves in yields. Well, static might be the new up, though, right? I mean, yeah. they haven't gone down, yes. which is a big part of the story. Let's be yeah. honest, right? They haven't deteriorated to the point where some thought they might. Mm -hmm. Flat is the new up maybe for earnings for a while. Yes, and I think that that is the big contrast to 22, which was all about earnings coming down. So I think watching 2024 earnings to see how, if they get revised higher because of this GDP growth, that can offset some of the multiple compression. But we do have to remember is that we're pressing into this new high for yields, real yields, and at near peak multiples, that is a challenge for these high-flying names.